Hello, grade 11 students. Welcome to our listening class for today. In today's lesson, we will try to accomplish two main objectives. First, you will build listening comprehension through answering six multiple choice questions. Second, you will listen to paraphrases and synonyms to fill in the gaps with no more than two words. All right, let's get started with the activity number A, page 26 on your student book. Question number one. What types of leisure activities can you think of? So there are different types of leisure activities that make you active, such as fishing, hunting, gardening, snowboarding, scuba diving, and snorkeling. You can also mention other activities that can boost your creativity, such as jewelry making. Second question, what do you like doing in your free time and why have you chosen this particular type of activity? Answers here may differ according to personal preferences. Let's share a model answer. When I have a bit of free time on my hands, means when I have a free time, I enjoy writing in my diary. I enjoy this activity because it gives me an opportunity to reflect on my thoughts and feelings. And here we justified our choice. Now move on to the first objective. Listen to people talking in six different situations and answer the questions. Choose A, B, C, or D. We have six questions. So before starting with the listening, I would love you to pause the video and read the tips. All right, let's read carefully the situation number one. You hear a sports journalist speaking on a radio program. Where is the speaker now? So the question is to identify the location of the speaker. In the news studio, on the football pitch, in the changing room, or in a press conference. Let's check. Listen carefully to the recording. B. Listen to people talking in six different situations and answer the questions. Choose A, B, C, or D. 1. There are some very disappointed looking faces around me here, John, and it's no wonder why. What happened out there today on the pitch came as a shock to just about everyone. We'd expected there to be wild scenes of celebration back here after the match. Now, as the players are changing out of their kits and getting ready to leave, there's nothing but stunned silence. Players and managers solemnly reflecting on a lost opportunity. To think that in the press conference there'd been talk of an easy victory for the local side. It just goes to show how dangerous it is to make predictions when it comes to football. Okay, now let me share a statement taken from the transcript. Read it very well. So the answer is, yes, see, it is in the changing room. Situation number two, you will hear a man talking on the phone about his athletic career. How does the man feel about being selected for the national team? He is upset, unsure, delighted, or optimistic. Let's check. Two. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying I never wanted to do this. On the contrary. When I got the call to say I'd been chosen to represent my county in the national championships, I was over the moon, absolutely thrilled. Who wouldn't have been? The initial enthusiasm soon disappeared, though. It's a huge responsibility. I mean, there's no way you can take something like this lightly or be casual about it. You have to give it your all. So, yeah, I'm wondering whether I really have what it takes, you know? All right, now according to the displayed clues, the answer is he is unsure or uncertain. In the situation number three, you will hear a husband and wife talking about hiking and swimming. What is the man's opinion or attitude? Read the options very well. Three. Which do you think is better exercise? Swimming or hiking? Good question. They're both good in different ways. I mean, you use more muscles when you're swimming, but when you're hiking, you get all that fresh air. Also, you can't really swim all day. Yeah, but you can't go hiking all day either. I suppose not, but you can do it for a lot longer. I think swimming can get pretty boring. I mean, all you do is go back and forth in a pool. 
Hiking isn't much better. I suppose you get to see a bit of nature, but I find it hard to get excited about climbing a hill. So, if you had to choose, I'd stay at home and watch TV. Nice. All right. So, as the man prefers to stay at home, the answer is A. Hiking is as boring as swimming. Situation number four, you will hear a man talking on the telephone. Why is the speaker making the call? To give directions or to make a complaint or express dissatisfaction, request information, apologize or say sorry for going somewhere. Let's check. Four. Hi, Brian. It's Steve here. Yeah, it couldn't be helped, I'm afraid. Angie's away visiting her parents in Dover. So I had my hands full looking after the kids, unfortunately. Anyway, Tom told me there's been a change of venue for our next training session. Yeah, he mentioned the name of the place, but I still have no idea how to get there. Do you think you could fill me in? Yeah, you're right about that. They're a real handful sometimes. You can't leave them alone for a minute. They're always complaining that they're bored. What a nightmare. You know how it is. All right, so according to the clues, the answer is yes to request information. In the situation number five, we will hear the following on the radio. What is it? A news bulletin, advertisement, a history documentary, or a travel announcement? Let's listen. Five. Today, there are millions of scouts around the world enjoying the fun and excitement of scouting. In fact, The Scout Movement has come a long way since Robert Baden Powell first created it in 1906. These days, it's no longer just about a bunch of children tying knots and putting up tents. Besides teaching children the importance of staying healthy and physically fit, scouting programs work towards developing a child's appreciation of service to others in their community. They aim to build a child's self confidence, ethics, and sense of personal responsibility. So, if you're looking for an interesting out of school activity for your children that does more than merely keep them active, sign them up for scouting. There's bound to be a group near you. All right, as they are convincing parents to sign their children up for scouting, so the answer is an advertisement. All right, in the situation number six, you are going to hear a man telling his wife about his great-grandfather's stamp collection. What does the stamp collection reveal about his great-grandfather or what does it show about him? Read the options very well. Six. There must be hundreds of stamps in these albums here. Yes, they were my great-grandfather's. He was a devoted collector. All the stamps are arranged according to the year they were sent and the country they are from. It's a lifetime's work. He must have been a great letter writer too. Strangely enough, he barely finished primary school and couldn't write well. He got most of these stamps from family members and friends. He also bought some from dealers and would often get new collections from the post office. Wow, what a great investment. Not really, but they mean a great deal to my family. All right, as all the stamps are arranged according to the year, so this shows that he was good at collecting and organizing. All right, now let's move on to the activity C. Listen again and fill in the gaps in the sentences below with an appropriate word or phrase. You should write no more than two words in each gap. Number one, the players and manager are very disappointed because they expected to have, they predicted something and they get disappointed. Number two, the man feels that representing his country in the national championship is a... So here we are looking for attitude. The man says that hiking is good. Why is it good? Because you get a lot of... Number four, the man is familiar with the fact that their next is taking place at a new venue. So taking place or happening, so this is an event. Number five, scouting programs today try to teach children the importance of helping other members of their, so you will focus on the members. Number six, the man's great-grandfather often bought new stamp collections from, the, from a place, of course. 
Let's listen and check. C. Listen again and complete the gaps in the sentences below with an appropriate word or phrase. You should write no more than two words in each gap. 1. There are some very disappointed looking faces around me here, John, and it's no wonder why. What happened out there today on the pitch came as a shock to just about everyone. We'd expected there to be wild scenes of celebration back here after the match. Now, as the players are changing out of their kits and getting ready to leave, there's nothing but stunned silence. Players and managers solemnly reflecting on a lost opportunity. To think that in the press conference there'd been talk of an easy victory for the local side. It just goes to show how dangerous it is to make predictions when it comes to football. 2. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying I never wanted to do this. On the contrary, when I got the call to say I'd been chosen to represent my county in the national championships, I was over the moon, absolutely thrilled. Who wouldn't have been? The initial enthusiasm soon disappeared, though. It's a huge responsibility. I mean, there's no way you can take something like this lightly or be casual about it. You have to give it your all. So, yeah, I'm wondering whether I really have what it takes, you know? 3. Which do you think is better exercise, swimming or hiking? Good question. They're both good in different ways. I mean, you use more muscles when you're swimming. But when you're hiking, you get all that fresh air. Also, you can't really swim all day. Yeah, but you can't go hiking all day either. I suppose not, but you can do it for a lot longer. I think swimming can get pretty boring. I mean, all you do is go back and forth in a pool. Hiking isn't much better. I suppose you get to see a bit of nature. But I find it hard to get excited about climbing a hill. So, if you had to choose? I'd stay at home and watch TV. Nice. 4. Hi, Brian. It's Steve here. Yeah, it couldn't be helped, I'm afraid. Angie's away visiting her parents in Dover, so I had my hands full looking after the kids, unfortunately. Anyway, Tom told me there's been a change of venue for our next training session. Yeah, he mentioned the name of the place, but I still have no idea how to get there. Do you think you could fill me in? Yeah, you're right about that. They're a real handful sometimes. You can't leave them alone for a minute. They're always complaining that they're bored. What a nightmare. You know how it is. 5. Today there are millions of scouts around the world enjoying the fun and excitement of scouting. In fact, the scout movement has come a long way since Robert Baden Powell first created it in 1906. These days, it's no longer just about a bunch of children tying knots and putting up tents. Besides teaching children the importance of staying healthy and physically fit, scouting programs work towards developing a child's appreciation of service to others in their community. They aim to build a child's self-confidence, ethics and sense of personal responsibility. So, if you're looking for an interesting out-of-school activity for your children, that does more than merely keep them active, sign them up for scouting. There's bound to be a group near you. 6. There must be hundreds of stamps in these albums here. Yes, they were my great-grandfather's. He was a devoted collector. All the stamps are arranged according to the year they were sent and the country they are from. It's a lifetime's work. He must have been a great letter writer too. Strangely enough, he barely finished primary school and couldn't write well. He got most of these stamps from family members and friends. He also bought some from dealers and would often get new collections from the post office. Wow, what a great investment. Not really, but they mean a great deal to my family. All right, now you can pause the video to take the displayed answer. Make sure that the words are no more than two words. It's fine if... It is one word, but not three. This is all for today. Thank you so much for your attendance. 
As a last piece of advice, if you would like to build your ability to understand spoken English, I would advise you to listen to monologues and dialogues and different types of conversations and hear male voices, female voices, and a variety of accents. Thank you so much.